welcome back to another edition of the Broad Podcaster with me, Jennifer Fierro, right here in the Highland Lakes, joined once again with Art DeLugans, the voice of the Lano Yellow Jackets. We're going to keep following our format, Art, and talk about the things that are happening in the wide, wide world of sports, namely things that are on the collegiate and professional level. So with that said, we had a chance to interview John Fields, the UT golf coach, who was a featured speaker of the Horseshoe Bay Sports Club, named after a dear friend of ours, Rudy Davalos. Rudy, of course, was in attendance yesterday. I did not know that Rudy hired yes. John Fields at the University of New Mexico when they, when Rudy was the athletic director, but you did. I know, no, I, I did not know that until yesterday. Okay. <laughs> did, Giving me credit for too much. <laughs> John spoke on a lot of topics yesterday. I went through, wrote my story on texaschalktalk.com. That's already up if you want to check that out. And my story will be in the Horseshoe Bay Beacon on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. So, in but I left a lot of things out and thought I can develop a second story from what I didn't write about in yesterday's piece. With that said... I'm going to throw you the ball first. What were your impressions of John Field? Oh, I thought he was just uh, excellent uh, coming off uh, national championship, uh, coaching the University of uh, Texas men. And so congratulations uh, to the school and to Coach Fields. And that's his second uh, championship. He also won in 2012. I thought he just seemed like a, a genuine human being who – uh, uh, handles the young men well, tries to tell them uh, about life and what's important and what's not, and uh, not to worry about things about which you cannot control, uh, things like that. And this is really the role of golf coaches because these young men come a lot of times with their own coaches as far as uh, on the course uh, activity is concerned. But then he has a lot to do uh, with, uh, I think, uh, the psychology uh, of the game. And he's a former pro, played on the European tour for a while, and then became a PGA professional, which did, means he did not play as a tour player on the PGA tour, but still was able to work at, at clubs and be a teacher. So I thought he was, he was very good, and uh, there were quite a few interesting uh, points about him that uh, I thought that Pierce Cootie was on the team that won the championship, beating Arizona State three matches to two in the final. And then Cootie turns pro and plays on the Corn Ferry Tour, which is the minor league tour right below PGA. And in his first event, he wins it. So I kidded Coach Fields uh, before his speech yesterday. I said, are you going to get a, a bit of a share of the uh, winning purse, and, and he laughed. But I thought that was uh, quite uh, uh, interesting that Pierce did so well. And Pierce and his twin brother, Parker, are grandsons of Charles Cootie, who won the 1971 Masters. Well, you, you touched on that quite a bit. Um, like I said, lots of different topics. What I came away with were his thoughts on the NIL and the collectives. That, to me, was a big deal because we hear about the collectives for football primarily. Not many people may know this, and this may have changed now, now that Pat Summit is no longer in charge of the Lady Balls in Tennessee. But at one point, Tennessee and Connecticut were the only two women's basketball programs in the country on the collegiate level who were in the black. Everybody else was in the red. So I bring that up to say this. We know, don't think about the impact of NIL outside of football, but the importance of that when it comes to the other sports, the Olympic sports, the non-revenue sports, however you want to classify the other sports. And one of the things that Coach Field said yesterday that stayed with me is that he has five golfers who travel. Each of them has their own, three of them have agents and a management team that also are part of the UT team that he has to account for. The other thing, the number of scholarships. 
He can only give out 4.5 scholarships, and none of those are full rides. A lot of those are partials. So he has to be creative on how and who he gives a scholarship to or offers because at the end, he cannot exceed that 4.5 scholarship limit, and he has to be able to, pro to uphold his promise to each of the golfers of what their scholarship percentage is. So all of those things were very interesting to me. Oh, well, I just wanted to mention, he said he was uh, in favor of the uh, NIL. In fact, he went so far as to say he loves it. And mainly what he said was, it's here. So we're just going to live with it for a while, for sure. Yeah, I read somewhere uh, Mike Gundy, who's the football coach at Oklahoma State. And we'll, we'll get into heavy, heavy college football later on uh, in, in the upcoming segments. But even... He has said, whether you like it or not is irrelevant at this point. NIL is not going away. Right, it, exactly. It's here. So let's stay. People, fans are going to have to find a way. They're going to have to just find a way. Was there anything else that stood out for you for John Fields? I know that he gave a lot of Texas fans some hope yesterday. He said that Sarkeesian is the right head football coach. Yes. And – it, it has been my observation that when Texas has been able to get the other sports going in a positive direction, typically football follows. He it's was usually not the leader. He was also very high on Chris Beard, the um, men's coach uh, at uh, Texas, who uh, I believe this will be his uh, third year coming up or second, second. Second year, all right. And, of course, he was the very successful coach at Texas Tech until lured – back to Texas because he was a graduate assistant, I believe. Yeah, it's it's so, the water. He's a Texas X under Tom Fenders. So I think uh, coach, uh, uh, coaches Sarkisian and Beard are, are excellent and will do well. Look how well Texas did in NCAA baseball, getting to the uh, College World Series. And I think Vic Schaefer, the head coach of the Texas women basketball team, is going to be a good one, already has been at Mississippi State. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. That that will be interesting with Pierce because it looks like that coaching staff, staff is getting revamped as we speak. So um, the, one of their, I think one of the, the assistant coaches was targeted for USC to be the head coach, did not get that job, but is not returning to Texas. They may have had another one or two coaching changes on that staff. And I think that has a lot to do with underachievement. You cannot be ranked number one going into the season and go 0-2 in Omaha and expect to keep your assistants in place. So we, we can talk about that at the later segments. I know that you wanted to talk about the Rangers and the Astros of Major League Baseball. What are your thoughts on what's happening there, even though it's late June, early July? Even though the Yankees are my favorite team, but... I think uh, uh, being a Texan here, uh, definitely mention both of those teams. And I'll guarantee it's rare that as we approach July that the Rangers ever get a mention. But they are one game below 500. And for the Rangers, that is really good. So I applaud uh, how well that organization is doing. They're in second place in the American League West. And the Astros are running away with the American League uh, West. So applaud them also. They just got uh, finished with a terrific series against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. And the, Ast the Astros and the Yankees split the four games. And one of those games was a combo no-hitter thrown by Houston. So uh, you can imagine uh, the excitement there. The Yankees, on the other hand, in the first game, 3 nothing after a half inning. I won't go through all the innings, I promise you. 3-0 Astros after a half inning. In the bottom of the first, the Yankees get three on two hits. We go to the ninth, and the Astros are up 6-3, bottom of the ninth. The Yankees have gotten no hits since the first inning. They score four times in the last of the ninth and win 7-6. So, uh, again, the series winds up 2-2. Justin Verlander got one of the wins for Houston. He's 39 years old and doing very well after missing last year, and he had Tommy John surgery. So great comeback story for Verlander. Well, and the Yankees, 
uh, as of this morning, Wednesday, 55 and 20. Just a remarkable record. Six games to go before the season is half over. Well, th the only thing I will say about this series is after the Astros won one of the two games against the Yankees, there was a sports columnist who wrote about the farm systems of the two teams and the current rosters. And basically what he wrote, and it was incredible, I loved just a little bit I was able to read on social media. But he basically said that right now he thought the Astros were light years ahead in terms of development, in terms of building the roster, in terms of farm system. So I'm sure that a lot of the Yankees read that because I think the Yankees came back and won the last of the four games, right? Well, they won, I think it was, that would be correct. They, no, they won the first game and the fourth. Yeah, yes. the, the, the fourth game. So, and, and at that point, this writer wrote, or this columnist wrote what he did after the third game. So anyway, we have more to come. That's going to wrap up segment number one. Please do us a favor, like, subscribe, and share the channel. And coming up, we're going to talk about the Big 12 and what's happening in sports administration across the country. And then we're going to get into a heavy dose of college football. I'm Jennifer Fierro, your broad podcaster. This guy's Art DeLugge, the voice of the Lando Yellow Jackets. Please stay with us and please like, subscribe, and share the channel.